Hi you guys, so welcome back to my channel. So like yeah, it's just like um another this is another poetry analysis. I don't know um when I'll upload this, but I have some other backlog of videos that I need to put and just I'm creating lots of creative content for you know this music and English stuff. So anyway, um yeah, my creative writing teacher is actually retired now. I sent an email out to her and I actually, like, I cried actually when I sent some email and I, I've, been, I've been crying a lot actually recently. I don't want to just, you know, sugarcoat everything. Like, I've just been crying a lot for my past traumas and I'm working with, I'm work, unpacking everything with my therapist and we're just discussing everything and it's just so much is happening. Like, I realize some things, you know, some people hold in things and it's okay to keep it in. And like all their resentment and frustrations but of course we can't just change everything and we can't always just be frustrated right with leadership or with certain things in people in higher positions right you know sometimes it's even people in horizontal positions the same level as you you have issues with or people above below left right right everything like in my church there's a concept where you have to know all the different relations just like in confucianism where like there's above and below there's left and right there's front and back front and back, left and right, above and below, and then that can make a circle, right? That makes a circle with all those points, if you know geometry, right? So that's also how relationships work and how just spatial spatial understandings work, right? I'm not always good with spatial things because I can get lost. <laughs> Many times I'm not really good with spatial awareness and like I don't drive, but like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, of course, people use GPS, but it's just, it's good to have your own internal compass too, right? Anyway, so that's just a preface. So. And it's actually relevant to these poem, these two poems. So let's see. Um, so I'm gonna read. Let's start with this one. Okay, we're start. These are poems from people in my school. So I'll put, um, I'll put a link. I think if you can purchase these, um, if you want to. So okay, um, it's this one. Okay. So this is called, it's entitled A Feather in the Wind and it was made by Kylie Bean and Kylie Bean, she has a disability I think and just like me and she was, she was an older student than me and she had, than I was and she was like one of the editors of the magazine for a time um, before in high school, in my Forest, at Forest Park High School so this is her poem and I really liked it a lot. So of course I liked everyone's poem. Like if I'm not reading your poem, don't feel bad. I won't because I don't want to read everyone's poem because that's too much. I'm just just poems that I really resonated with and like don't feel bad okay if I don't read your poem because everyone's poem is really good and we should try to be accepting of all people, right? All cultures, all races, all people and like everyone has their own voice and like I don't want to stifle or suppress your voice, right? Oh this is by Kylie Bean. A s okay, so, a small white feather flutters, forgotten in the corner, kept from flying away, only by the dirt that entraps it, that holds it down where it is. A small pale boy fidgets, forgotten in the corner, kept from flying away, only by the life that entraps him, that holds him down in reality. This small white feather grows darker from the debris, staining it every second until it is no longer recognizable this small pale boy's mind grows darker from the pain staining it every second until he is no longer recognizable a small brown feather lies there fluttering frantically but no one notices a small tarnished boy <laughs> sorry i should have laughed Sometimes it's funny for me sometimes, right? Sometimes you laugh when you're sad. Okay. Um, a small... Okay. A small tarnished boy stands there, asking for help, but no one notices. The small brown feather gets caught in a gust of wind. The small tarnished boy gets caught in a burst of pain. The small brown feather flies away. That's the poem. I'll put the poem in the description box. So that's just to know how to pronounce things, right? If you need to know how to pronounce things. Um, so f this is by Kylie Bean, and she's really, you know, we all. I don't know if exactly her disability, but everyone has a disability. Not, not everyone has a disability, but 
there are those that do right and there's different types of disabilities so it's good to do research about that to know more um so like in this poem i should have it here too just to see okay. so in this poem there's like first there's like alliteration right when she says when kylie says darker debris she says um, if you look in the description box, she says grows darker, grows darker from the debris. That's DD, right? Two Ds. And then later on, she says fluttering frantically. So those are two examples of alliteration. Fluttering frantically, or the feather, for the feather. And she uses words that are logical to describe the feather and to describe the boy. You know, like the concept of emotions, how humans can have emotions. And then the feather is more just getting darker with dirt, right? The, the feather is getting darker each second by the dirt. So that's logical, right? But of course, it's symbolic. It's symbolic, but also logical. And um, the boy is, you know, having emotional concerns. And you know, these things can be re representative of like the pressures that we have, the expectations that we have in society. And like each, you know, each moment of sorrow adds up for the fe for the boy. And the feather, like feather, could symbolize, you know, Native Americans. It could symbolize um, birds. It could symbolize just nature in general. The feather, right? how we forget about nature and we just let nature you know we abuse and, and abuse the environment all the time right with through pollution littering and like you know just plastic pollution and paper pollution everything is carbon me carbon methane gas methane and carbon emissions right of course we're really lots of countries are working for you know renewability and you know solar wind all those types of energy and geothermal and like nuclear energy and of course nuclear energy is controversial for some people and so um yeah and also there's like the sense there could be this where the it could be some trauma that the boy has right for different reasons because maybe he's he, he experienced neglect in his family neglect or verbal abuse physical abuse or emotional abuse those are different types of abuse right just like if his parents maybe in this this is a just a random it's not a real person it's just of course hypothetical right it could be anyone right that we know and it's just like maybe his parents or it could be just his friends in school or his other friends outside of school that even your friends could abuse you too like with um with their words right like when when they if they say something like oh you're not good enough or you're never gonna amount to anything like those kinds of words they do can be hurtful right and we don't want to put that on anyone right but of course in society you have to uh, eventually step up to the plate and you have to understand like what's it called you have to understand like you know you have to do the school work and if you're struggling in school that's why like i'm a tutor i can support in some ways we like to learn how to do things better but you know there's different workers but in society that psychological workers and therapists coaches and Everyone's just working to make everyone feel good and to make everyone feel better. And there's things, of course, that sometimes it's indescribable, like how much pain you have, right? And other things like cyberbullying, to even just cyberbullying and not someone in real life, but just cyberbullying. We think we have sometimes like we think we think we have an emotional attachment to someone, even and if we've been talking to them for a few days or a few months, then we feel like they they should be our friends, right? But even still, some people just have ulterior motives or some people just are not who they say they are. And, you know, there's nothing you can do about that for some reason. Because, like, if people ghost you, you, everyone has ghosted someone, right? And we've all been ghosted, too. So it goes both ways when you ghost people. Um, like the Ella Henderson song but that I've done. But it's just, you know, we just have to be respectful of people's time and people have other priorities, too, right? So yeah, the feather in this poem, that's something, right? But the feather, the boy becomes the feather at the end, the conclusion, right? So it says, the small, the small brown feather gets caught in a gust of wind. The small tarnished boy gets caught in a burst of pain. The small brown feather flies away, right? So he becomes the feather, right? And he's, it's like, there's also, of course, parallel structure in this poem. There's par parallel structure where it goes from one, to, one stanza to the next. First, the feather then the boy, the feather, the boy, it goes back and forth, right, with who it's, who Kylie, who Kylie is addressing and who's she's, who she's mentioning. So that's really, you know, more powerful. It, it's building the tension and like the, you know, the, the, the arc, the arc of the poem, right? 
the narrative, the narrative, um, the narration. So like, um, yeah, just like in this poem, like just as we calculate like our finances, um, so too do we like calculate emotions. Too. We also are always calculating people's our own emotions and the emotions of others, and we see these nonverbal cues and the verbal cues and. You know we can't really read people's minds and sometimes we we want it's good to sometimes anticipate people's thoughts so that we have that skill sometimes to anticipate what people are thinking and we try to you know be our best selves for whatever wherever we are but yeah there's also this concept of like in this poem like the concept of clethrophobia which is like the fear of being trapped and there's also like claustrophobia like the fear of being in crowded spaces too because the boy is probably he because he was he had maybe bad experiences and then he wants to isolate fear of being in crowded spaces right fear of being in crowded spaces and then maybe like i also i have those fears so the fear of being trapped is another one right so the claustrophobia. so and then this poem i feel like is not cliche it's not cliche because it, she's doing her she's using a different kind of method it's more it's original the concept is of course it has probably has been done before but in this context it's really i think powerful and yeah because like the you know the theme the theme of this uh, magazine is terra incognita like we all voted in our class we all voted for what we want the theme to be the themes to be each year and this one won for this year 2014 terra incognita is um like latin it's latin for like uncharted territory right uncharted territory so that just means like you know there's there's lands that we have not seen yet and there's lands that we have not uh, mapped out or cart you know cartographers they map out like they you know did all those things in the past right when like even before you do the development right of cities the development of cities and the development of like towns right before all that you had to just work with wilderness right there were just trees and everything and of course, you know, the concept with the feather with Native Americans, we have to try to um, have reconciliation with the Native Americans who Americans have, you know, really devastated as, you know, you learn in your in your college courses, right, about settler colonialism and all of those theory, th those theories, right, related with Native, Native people. So, yeah, and then another thing that I want to say is this poem is like, is a, the main another parallel structure is one thing but also like metaphor and not just any metaphor it's like extended metaphor right because she's the metaphor it goes throughout the whole poem like with metaphor if it's just like one line or one sentence or a few sentences then that's just metaphor but if it's more extended metaphor i think this is more of an extended metaphor which is also can be kind of termed similarly with like allegory right an allegory which is like a larger theme so yeah it's just like when we look at this poem right in the description box like kept from flying away the, the boy is kept from flying away also it's sometimes it's described logically like i said but also it's described in terms of one another kept from flying away right the feather feathers usually are in with birds and they can fly away so the boy is saying it's kylie says how the boy is kept from flying away he's trapped forgotten in the corner so that's like you know a feather's quality of being in flight right and then it says um the feather right the feather is being and the feather is getting stained every second and it's no longer recognizable right so just like with people right usually we can recognize people right we don't recognize um feathers um but of course we can recognize other things too besides people and pla we can recognize places but the like you know you know when you say like with people like, oh, this person is no longer recognizable. That's something people say, right? Like, oh, you look so different. Like, oh, you got a haircut. Or like, oh, you're wearing some new outfit, right? You're not recognizable. So those, those are more, of course, pleasant, more euphemistic and pleasant situations. But like with this situation, like when you say like, it can be in a bad context too. Like you say, oh, you're no longer recognizable. Like, oh, what happened to you? Like, you look so different. Like, and we shouldn't judge people like if they do any procedure, right? Or even if not a procedure, but like just... You know if you get older right and or if, you know if you you know do any kind of procedure or any kind of like or just you know wearing makeup if you're just wearing makeup either as a man or a woman right or something right if you're just wearing different kind of makeup or you have 
or just you know you're or if you're wearing like clothes that are like um like emo like emo clothes or you know like punk rock clothes or something right and if that's the style that you want right and if someone says like oh you look unrecognizable and you know there's a hint of sarcasm like um some kind of hint of like either sarcasm or like some kind of you know not really pleasant words that are just um meant to hurt you like words like oh it's but they say it in a certain way that's not hurt trying to not be hurtful so like yeah that word where it's like recognizable right so that's like a charged word too like if you say you're no longer recognizable it can be good or bad depending on if you're really close friends with that person or not right so those are just things i got from this so and yeah i think that's good for this one okay all right thanks you guys so that's this one hey guys me Jane. so let's do this this is another poem that's it's not in the same magazine but it's a similar poem that i found that's goes with the previous poem that i just read and we talked about so this is called the umbrella um by Rihanna. No, I'm just joking. It's by um, Barbara Haskett. Okay, it's by Barbara Haskett. Um, okay, so I'll read it first and then we can discuss it. So, okay. So, my sorrow keeps me under my umbrella, my tattered scion shell. I know it's messed up, it's imperfect, but this, but there is where I dwell. I created it by myself after all you made me do, but I am no umbrella maker, so the rain just pours on through. Something peculiar puzzles me, I can't believe it myself, when I stick my hand outside and reach out to someone else. It's drier there, it's purer there, my pruned fingers plump, I know I need to leave my shell, my shield, I just can't make the jump. And it's been so long since I felt the sun, its rays improved my health. But when it comes to my well-being, I never help myself. So this umbrella, this broken mess, this thing I do abhor, I don't really know what to do with it anymore. I think I tried to drop it once, but the sadness always lingers. When I tried to leave it behind, it stayed stuck to my fingers. So here I am with my umbrella, hands locked in an embrace. It ties me down, not holding me up. Although now that's commonplace. So, yeah, I think this poem is really great because I liked it. It's it has the it has rhythm and it has rhyme, so that's good too. But the other poem is still good. Free verse. It was still good. Free. I like free verse too. I like everything. So, let me see. Like sometimes it's the feeling. Is like your attempts don't always succeed right your attempts in life but you have to keep trying anyway and then like the umbrella is the umbrella like usually what it's it's to shield the rain right that's the purpose but this in the way this poem describes the umbrella it doesn't fulfill its purpose right it has some holes in the umbrella just like you know you you use something for a long time and then it gets damaged right eventually and it's like some the concept of like how people's words and actions do affect you right and they can make you self-conscious right the mood of this poem is kind of like i got the sense how it's like unrealistically optimistic right like because she says i she said i know i need to leave my shield but then she just can't make the jump so she's like unrealistically optim this um barbara is being in this poem she's being like unrealistically optimistic right so she's trying to be optimistic but it's unrealistic and then she's like helplessly confused right helplessly confused those are some the moods the moods that i got and also like the umbrella is described as being a shell a scion shell scion is blue right a shell it's described as being um a shield the umbrella is described as a shell a shield and also what else it's a shell a shield yeah, those kinds of things, right? So, yeah, and she's kind of being like, you know, funny when she says like, I'm no umbrella maker. She's being funny there, right? 
I'm not an umbrella maker, so the rain just pours on through. So she's like, I'm, she's saying like, I don't know how to make umbrellas, right? So what can I do to fix this umbrella, this, you know, the, my situation or like my pain, right? What can I do to fix this problem that you have, right? Because you're not, maybe you feel like you're not qualified to like solve your problems, right? Because you don't, you can't deal with umbrellas. Just like with any certain situations, like, oh, I'm not, like, um, maybe you, um, maybe you're just really want to find a certain book in your library, but you say, I'm not a librarian, I don't work at a library, so you're, you feel like, oh, I can't know which, like, because maybe you have difficulty with alphabetical order or just the Dewey Decimal System too, right? Or the Dewey Decimal System, and you feel like, I'm not a librarian, so you can't do that, right? If you're not trained. Sometimes if you're, that's so why we can work to train people, right? And work people, help people. So, yeah, with other things too, like, if you feel like, um, um, what's something? What else? Like, just certain, you know, occupations where you feel like you're not qualified, you, you're not in that occupation, right? And you don't know anyone in that occupation, so you feel like there's nothing, because she says, I'm not an umbrella maker. So she's being, you know, self-deprecating, right? Self-deprecating. Um, and then she has alliteration like with the pruned and plump, right? She says, where does she say? And you know, she also says peculiar puzzles, like something peculiar puzzles me. Something peculiar puzzles me, that's alliteration. And then my pruned fingers plump, right? My pruned fingers plump. So those are those are examples of alliteration. And then she says assonance on the sixth stanza. So the sixth stanza, one, two, three. On the sixth stanza when she says like, the O sound. So like she says, so this umbrella, this broken mess, this thing I do abhor. I don't really know what to do with it anymore. When all those O sounds, so all those O sounds are O. This broken mess, I do abhor. I don't really know what to do. All those O sounds, right? Those are all assonance. Assonance is a vowel sound. So okay. So that stanza, the sixth stanza has assonance in there, so you could say that, right? But I think it's good to analyze these poems because like, you know, in schools, like we always analyze people from long time ago, right? Authors from a long time ago and sometimes authors more recently, but it's good to see like our own, you know, our own peers work, right? And like, I, I think everyone is capable of, you know, being, even surpassing other people, right? And like, we always try to uplift people and we never know like what will be studied, right? In a decade or, 50 years from now, right? Some of these people, some of my classmates, right? I feel like they could be, some of their poems and other people's, you know, books and stuff, they could be studied, right, in 50 years or 40 or 30 years, right? We never know what will be studied later on. So, I think that's why it's we should be really grateful for people who, like, I'm really grateful for my creative writing teacher, Mrs. Dowling, because, like, and other people, too, like, with any class, like, you never know. You could submit something for publication or just someone might eventually just discover it and then you know things like that it can be you know uplifting to feel like if because some people it's good to you know have your work studied by other people i think it's good to have analysis so so also with this poem um like this water the water itself right the water is like a negative force it's like a negative pressure and the sun, the sun is described as warmth and vitality in this poem. So she says like, I've, I, it's been so long since I felt the sun, its rays improved my health, right? The sun is described in one stanza as being really helpful and warm and vitality, but the, w the water itself is described as something actually like negative and pressure, right? It has pressure and the water just keeps pounding down, right, on her umbrella. And the umbrella only protects a little bit, right? It has probably some holes or something, and it can only protect her a little bit. And like the water, the water itself can be symbolic of, you know, just all the pressures, right, in life. And also just like, you know, one insult, right? One insult can really damage someone. But of course, we should also understand like tough love is important too, is essential, right? To have tough love. When you have tough love, then, you know, you can have try to learn from what happened and you know just just be friends with those who you want to be friends with right and then you know just try to get to know people too right so those are things and then um
So yeah, I think also in this poem, The Umbrella by Barbara Haskett. So Barbara is really, it's just like she's being really like, it's like she tried her best, but it's just, she tries to, you know, hold on to the umbrella, right? She tries to hold on really tightly to the umbrella, but it's just like the water is making her slip, her hand, her hands are slipping away from the, the pole, right? The pole of the umbrella and like she wants to hold on to her faith and like her trust in God, right? You know, in her values, in her beliefs, and in her family, in her relationships, everything she wants to hold on to, that umbrella. And, you know, that center, it's in the core, right? It's in the center. The umbrella is always in the center, right? The pole. And she wants to stay centered on her, her life and her mission, her purpose. And But like the water is going through the umbrella and her hands are slipping with the water, right? And she can no longer hold on to the umbrella. So those are things that I got from this poem. And yeah, we talked a little bit about the mood. The mood of the poem is something you can analyze too that can help. And yeah, there's rhythm and rhyme also. And it's just, you know, um, and she's describing the umbrella like it's something that should make your life easier, right? But at the end, she says, so here I am with my umbrella hands locked in an embrace. It ties me down, not holding me up. Although now that's commonplace, right? Commonplace, so it's not just her. She's describing other people have the same situation, but it's saying commonplace, kind of. It could be interpreted to mean that, right? But also like, um, like she, when she says, it ties me down, not holding me up, right? Down and up, that's a contrast because it's in the same line if it's in the same line or the same sentence that can be juxt that also can be like juxtaposition the juxtaposition between those two forces right so you know this umbrella is supposed to help you right it's supposed to keep the rain away but instead it's just a burden right the umbrella is just a burden to hold and like it makes her you know it makes her feel worse right it's just not helping her um the umbrella right okay so those are things i got from this one thanks thanks you guys so those are two poems, okay.